Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash, Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. I'm New Jack. Unbelievable, fans. If Cover your eyes, cover your ears, put the women and children to bed. Wrestling Insiders Extreme is now. She's about to get real. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marotti along with New Jack, the author of this acclaimed autobiography you can find at the only NewJack.com. If you didn't join us May the 8th for our live cyber session, at least, you know, we got stuff cooking in June. We're going, you know, hopefully you're going to be one of our regulars coming in now. Mm -hmm. We've been having a hell of a lot of fun yeah. with everything we're doing here on Wrestling Insiders with New Jack. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my dear friends at Noel Salon over at 347 Pleasant Street, downtown Malden, Massachusetts. If they can make my dilapidated self look halfway decent, imagine what they can do for you. For information for all your hair needs, visit noellesalon.com. Cheap plug for our great friends over there. This is actually one of the stylists. She had a little bit of an interest in you, New Jack. I, I had to tell her that you were a married man, but if this was back in the 90s, a, a woman by we call her Sarge Russo would have... Uh, she would have helped the cause in the U.S. She would have given a run for my money. She would have given. <laughs> Sarge would have given you a run for the money, baby. Well, I got one. Give me a run if I went at home. I appreciate it, dear. Well, but it's all gone. Sarge, you're out. You're out of luck. <laughs> oh boy, and it would have been extreme if you ever saw her, brother. <laughs> She's not the, the most petite one, but that's all right. That's why we call her Sarge. Anyway, anyway, nothing against Bob Remus, but. Uh, ECW, it's time to get extreme. You left Smoky Mountain, you went in to ECW. What was the pitch from Paul Heyman and Todd Gordon when you made contact with them? Or did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? What happened? Al Snow told me to call Todd Gordon. Uncle Al, as we call him. Yeah. So I did. And then he gave me Paul Lee's number. But I was talking mostly to Todd. Mm -hmm. And Todd was like, we want you to come up next week. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a problem with Cornette. But since my run was up in Smoky Mountains, I didn't give a fuck. So I was like, I'm leaving. Mustafa was like, whatever you do, I'm doing. So we left and went to ECW. And that was an experience. Bruh. <laughs> that was an experience. From the work, the locker room, the after show, the after party, the whole nine was a fucking experience. We're gonna get there, we're gonna dissect it from A to Z, because there is so much to cover, but Take us back to your first night, June the 17th, 1995. What was your expectation headed into uh, Bob Dwyer, Hoodies and Choke Slams? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The ECW Arena, not too far from those two places that has the steak and cheese sandwiches that I like. Yeah. Well, the angle was we were supposed to attack the public enemy. And the police was going to handcuff us and take us out of the building. Really? Oh, that was going to be hot. It got back to my mom that I had gotten arrested. In this angle? Yeah. Okay. But she didn't know it was an angle. <laughs> and she was like, you just went up there and you're getting in trouble already. 
I was like, bitch, shut up. I'm like, it's an angle. Leave me the fuck alone. Me and my mom, we never got along. So we did it. The cops took us out of the building, took us around the corner. We got a ride to the hotel. And we stayed in a hotel out by the airport, away from all the fans. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until the next time we came to ECW that I got exposed to fans hanging out with the wrestlers. And it was a ride. Was it at that, what was it, a Holiday Inn? Travel Lodge. Travel, I'm sorry. The Holiday Inn came later. <laughs> <laughs> but a little it was, later on, yeah. But it yep. was a travel lodge. Yeah. We had a good time. We had a good time. Were you expecting the atmosphere that you walked into? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> was it, uh, um, you know, immediately the proverbial sex, drugs, and rock and roll? First night in, or? No, it took me a couple of months before I started doing drugs. No, I say about a year. So you were with ECW for about a year, and still pretty much your only recreational vehicle was just drinking a yeah. little? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, actually, pretty good. Yeah. We had a good time. A lot of women? Yeah. I was married at the time, so I still couldn't fuck around. Really? All right. But we got divorced. All right, well, in the middle of that run. And that's when all best was off. <laughs> sure did. So you were a loyal man. Yeah. You were, you know, that's admirable. Of course. Uh, so no drugs, no women, just extreme wrestling to start. Yep. Your stint there in the company. Yep. What did you think of working with Johnny and Ted? Um, I'm drawing a blank. What was his name? Johnny. Johnny Grunge and Ted. No, Johnny Grunge and Ted. But what was Ted's work name? Rock or Rock? Yeah. Okay. Your, your initial memories of working with the two of them, two guys I, I had some experiences with myself over the years, especially Johnny. I love working with them guys, man. We had the ball, and we tore the place apart. We tore it apart. And the fans loved it. That was a feud. Yeah. That was a feud. Yeah. And even with all the, the singles talents and singles titles they had, when you guys first came in, who was closing out the shows at the ECW arena? The gangsters and public enemy. Off the bat. Right off the, off the bat. Straight off the bat. Right, off the, right bat. off the bat. Yep. Straight off the bat. The gangsters in public enemy. I think it was the next... Back then, they used to run the ECW arena, what, sometimes twice a month, depending upon how the calendar Every would work weeks. out. Every three weeks is how it worked. Um, you guys were hot and heavy. You were put into the main event spot right away. Yeah. Yeah. Were you surprised by that? Did you know that was coming? Hmm. I just took it as I knew I was over I'm like, we must be doing something right. They putting the straps. We, we fighting for the fucking titles. Right off the bat, we doing something good. Something work. But did you have uh, a, con you know, I know back then it was a little different, but was there any kind of a contract that you had at that point? Or were you working on a, a verbal agreement? Verbal. Night to night? Verbal, verbal agreement? Yeah. Was it for you know, one year, two years, three years, or anything like that? Or no? <laughs> it was weekly. <laughs> so you could have been gone at any time. Yeah. If it didn't work out well. Yeah, if oh, that, it didn't work out, that wouldn't, it. that wouldn't have been that good. <laughs> but I mean, what were you thought of the, the rabid fans that would go to the ECW mm -hmm. arena? I mean, you talk about, I'm sure they weren't using some of the language that maybe you were accustomed to getting in Smoky Mountain. But as far as the passion and the, the anger and the, you know, it was a different breed down there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was different. It was it, it it was some different shit. It was altogether different. They wanted to be part of the show. Yeah, yeah. They come in there. They had the shirts off. The hat 
t shirt tied around the head, the hats on backwards, paint, just the whole night. It was just something totally different. Not what you were expecting? No. And you could tell every week, every time the TV show would air, you would see more of this. The first time I saw TV, it was two fans holding up their eggs. Next time I saw, it was 10, then 20, then the whole goddamn building. It was like Al Snow with the heads later on. Yeah. It started with a couple and then snowballed. Yep. Yeah. I mean, what about merchandising? What was it like then? Did you get a, a certain percentage of the t-shirts that were sold? Or? At the time, we didn't have a merchandise deal. Me and Sandman was getting our shirts made. And we would go out in the parking lot and sell them out of the car. You made your own? Yeah. <laughs> so then, one night, Paulie came with me. He said, Jack, come here. He said, look at that camera. He said, tell me what do you see? I said, I see a bunch of white people. <laughs> he said, no. What do you see? I said, what am I looking for? He said, look how many New Jack t-shirts you see in the audience. And I hadn't paid any attention. So I was like, okay, I see a lot. He said, let's make a deal. He said, we can guess how many shirts you sell for the weekend. I'll start making your shirts and I'll give you a raise. As to guesstimate how many shirts you sell. So you never got a cut of actual t-shirt merchandise, you just got a raise as far as your overall pay went? He would guess how many shirts I would sell on the weekends. And he added that into my pay. So I stopped bringing my shirts and I let him sell them. He made them. He sold your shirts or he made his own? He made them. He made his own? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then he paid me what he would guess that we made, and that's how it worked. Did you think that was a good deal as opposed to getting yeah, just a straight? Yeah, I was tired of lugging them goddamn shirts everywhere. No, but I mean, you know, some guys, you know, you get 10, 15 percent or whatever it might have been. Do you no, think he you did? Us. What, what's that? He paid us. You, you, think, you think you did better as a result of that? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Good for you. At the time you came in, another program that was going on that was pretty unique, I know you'd work with at least one of the gentlemen as uh, time would go on at ECW, but the Rottens were having these Taipei death matches with glass and all sorts of crazy things. Any memories of, of that going on while you guys were making your hot debut with Public Enemy? Did you feel like you had something odd you had to follow up on? Well, when we, when we came in, Ian and Axel was doing an angle where they had a match with Public Enemy. No, they had a match against each other, and then Public Enemy interfered in the match. You guys came out, right, right, and right. And then we came out and interfered. And I think it was that Taipei Deathmatch yeah. thing. Yeah. Which was pretty, wasn't there glass involved? Mm -hmm. And So did you feel like you had something big you had to follow up on after that? or Because, I mean, that was pretty unique shit. I was with it. You were with it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel like once you came to ECW after feeling the landscape out after a month or two, maybe you had to up the ante a little bit where there were a lot of guys working that style as opposed to Smoky Mountain? I can't imagine in Smoky Mountain there were too many guys that were similar to the gangsters, style-wise. I mean, like I said, we was doing the street fights in Smoky Mountain. Right. But when I hit ECW, that's what they were doing. So that fit right what we were doing from Smoky Mountain. So we just kept it going. You didn't up it, you just kept it as it was. Yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. All right, wrestling fans, I'm getting the cue from the back as we continue this great talk of the gangsta, this man, New Jack's introduction to ECW. We'll be back after this brief timeout with more Wrestling Insiders Extreme. Stand by.
Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Boston Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, Saturday, September the 28th, 1991. In the opening contest, the Dragon beat Skinner. IRS with the win over Hacksaw Jim Duggan via disqualification. Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich defeated the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty. Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, victorious over the Million Dollar Champion, Virgil, via countout. WWF Tag Team Champions, the Legion of Doom, retained the titles over the Nasty Boys. The Beverly Brothers beat the Bushwhackers. WWF Intercontinental Champion, Bret Hitman Hart, retained the title over the Berserker, replacing the Warlord. And in the main event, Sid Justice, replacing the Ultimate Warrior, defeated The Undertaker in a casket match. If you were in Boston Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the link in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autograph mystery photo and an on-air shout out as our thanks to you get this ultra rare autograph fiend and alexa bliss poster now wrestling fans especially here in the boston area we want to thank our great friends at red rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts red rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to this crazy studio as we continue our adventure here on Wrestling Inside is Extreme. Dan Marotti along with New Jack. What's up? I'm sure you visited the only newjack.com for all of you uh, New Jack needs, including this awesome autobiography. I have been reading every night before I go to bed. I don't even want to shut the light off. I want to keep enjoying the story. Hopefully you feel the same way about these talk shows, because New Jack is going to be joining us uh, quite a bit, I think, as time goes on here at the studio. Let me ask you this. There were a lot of uh, talent that was departing the company as you guys were coming in. The Monday Night Wars, we're going to get started in September with Raw and Nitro. Everybody was looking for talent, and ECW, 
uh, for better or worse, was a great place to try and cherry pick some of that talent mm. from. Some guys, some girls you might have uh, encountered in your time there that were leaving around the same time. The Steiner brothers had a cup of coffee in ECW, which yeah. a lot of people forget. Did you interact with them at all? We talked. We never worked with each other. Yeah, what did you think of the Steiners? They was cool. I liked them. Would you like to have worked the Steiners? Yeah. That would have been an interesting uh, style contrast, I guess. Yeah. That would have been an interesting I one. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, the Vampire Warrior, better known as Gangrel? Yeah, I like Gangrel. His cup of coffee, I mean, his run there, I think, is when you'd call more of a cup of coffee. He yeah. wasn't a mainstay. And uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of intergender wrestler by any stretch of the imagination, but. Luna Vachon wrestled some men in ECW. Any memories? That was my girl. Any I memories Luna. of Luna? Yeah, I love Luna. And what did you like about Luna? She was just cool. Every time she saw me, she'd be like, New Jack. I'd be like, Luna. <laughs> she got mad at Eric Sims one night oh. at a signing. And she was cursing Eric for everything it was worth. And I walked up, and she just came and grabbed me. She was like, New Jack. I fucking hate him. I said, do you? I said, I do too. <laughs> I was just fucking with it. I do three. Yeah. But uh, no, Luna was cool. Yeah. I remember she got an award, the Cauliflower Alley Club Award, uh, a couple of years before she passed. And she was, you could tell, very truly touched. Her speech was only two or three minutes long. Mm. And she was watering up and... It meant a lot to her. And, uh, another lunatic uh, side note, she actually beat the fuck out of one of our co-hosts, Oscar, yeah. in an in elevator over in Europe. I don't know what led to it, but you know Luna could have that angry side to her mm -hmm. if you get her at the wrong time, wrong place. And poor Oscar got it. <laughs> yeah. Oscar got it good over at some WWF European tour mm -hmm. they were on together. But sad to see Luna go. What about uh, Dean Malenko, a man that many thought was having some masterpieces at the time leave the company? Did I didn't you? like him. How come? I just didn't. He just wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't like him. We spoke, but that was as far as it went. I, I never worked him. I didn't want to work him. He didn't want to work me. Him, Benoit, didn't, did, they didn't want no part of the gangsters. Because of their style, you think? Yeah. Well, okay. What and they knew they would have got the shit beat out of him. Former WWE World Champion, before he wound up passing away, Eddie Guerrero. I like Eddie. And what did you like about Eddie? Me and Eddie was just cool. Every time we would see each other after we go home for the weekend, we come back. I go to the airport. I see him in the airport. And we used to do this stupid shit all the time. Nothing can keep us apart. <laughs> we. I don't know where it came. It came from the, the, the fucking movie. Uh, oh my God! What's that in that movie? Color Purple. It came from the Color Purple. I don't remember that spot from the Color Purple. But the two girls were saying nothing can keep us apart, and me and Eddie used to do that all the time. And when he died, I was hurt. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. Do you know Vicky at all? She was here in the studio. She's, what a nice, 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 classy lady. I like her an awful lot. Another guy that left the company around the time you were coming in, kind of a, a sensitive name that comes up in the world of professional wrestling, the late Chris Benoit. I like him. I hate him. Even at that point? When he killed Nancy, I hate him. I hated that motherfucker for that. I hated him. Well, at that point in ECW, did you have any thoughts either way before any of that happened? No. After... I found out because I kept hearing that he killed his wife, but I didn't put two and two together. I, I forgot that he was married to Nancy. And then once I found out that it was Nancy, I went nuts. I was doing promos and interviews and all kind of shit, and I ate his ass alive. I hated him. To this day, I still hate him. He's been dead now for what? 13, 14 yeah, years? I in hated that motherfucker. Yeah. But was it because you were close with Nancy? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I, you know, I knew her, I'll always know her as Nancy Sullivan, because as yeah. I mentioned earlier, Kevin used to come in a lot with Tony Rumble. So, you know, Nancy would from time to time pop in too. I remember you weren't on the show, but the first time ECW ran here in New England, it was uh, November of 95 at Champ Serena in Salisbury Beach. And I, again, I'm in the 10th grade. And we went and we got Sandman, Grunge, and Nancy over at the Holiday Inn Hotel across the street from Kowloon. Here I am, a 15-year-old fucking kid. You can imagine what might have been going on in the room for a 15-year-old kid. Yeah. But I just remember I was sitting on the bed with Nancy. She was so nice talking about Kevin and things like that. And that fucking day, I remember that weekend leading into what had happened. TNA was up here having a tour for the first time, and we helped promote their shows. Mm. And the guys were all talking on the Sunday show. Jeez, what the fuck is going on that would make Benoit miss the pay-per-view that night? Because he was uh, in one of the featured matches on the WWE pay-per-view that right. Sunday night. And then the, the next day to learn what... I'm getting chills right now. The next day to learn what had happened. Right. I mean... What would make someone go to the lengths to do that is what, where I, I, is what I don't understand. It was fucked up, man. And that motherfucker had a goddamn mental problem. It was fucked up. A lot of people, if at times, put the heat on concussions. Do you think maybe his okay. brain was mashed and no. he was... No. Dude, I got hit in the head. I cracked my fucking skull. All of my kids are still alive. Baby mama's still alive. So that was bullshit. That was bullshit. Do you remember where you were when you found out? I can remember the exact spot, no. the exact moment. I was standing in my bedroom and a friend of mine texted me. Did you hear what happened with Benoit? I'm, no. He said, you should go online. And I looked. Yeah. She deserved a better fate. Yeah. You know, people knock Kevin for this and that, but you know what? Kevin never did anything Kevin like that. Kevin didn't do that shit. Kevin never did anything like that. No, I'm getting... And I remember the weekend of... Or would have been a few years before WrestleMania 20, superstar Billy Graham, who we had helped out with when he was almost dead with his liver problem. Um, he was nice enough to, to get tickets and whatnot to the show, Hall of Fame banquet, mm -hmm in WrestleMania, and I remember the little kid there with Chris, that was the night he won the title in yeah. the triple threat match with Michaels and Triple H, and I just, you know, that, that's just one that'll always stick with you, you know? Yeah. She was such, just fun, spirited, Boston girl, um, and for that to happen over nothing, right. you know? But uh, moving along in the world of ECW, a lot more great talents that you came across. Uh, how was the public enemy feud getting over with the fans? I mean, you didn't, they didn't put you on all the house shows initially. They kind of worked you into the TV first mm -hmm. to get you guys over as true superstars. What was it like doing the quote-unquote ECW loop? You know, you had Reading, you had Plymouth Meeting, you had all those types of towns. What was the reaction like outside of the ECW arena? I mean, it was cool. The, the fans accepted. They was like, you know, street motherfuckers against street motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like... Let's go see who's going to win. Yeah. And we would got them go out there and we would destroy shit. Um, and, and it worked. Yeah. I mean, you could say, you know what, they weren't technical masterpieces, but they weren't going for technical masterpieces. Right. They wanted to see some guys kick the shit out of each other. Right. Um, you even had an event named after you that summer. That must have been kind of a cool feeling. Gangsta's well, Paradise. Yeah. <laughs> when you worked with Public Enemy, I think it was a six-man. Yeah, it was you and the ECW champion, the Sandman, against Public Enemy and Mikey Whipwreck. Yeah. What was it like trying to go the six-man or trying to incorporate? It was the same thing. Yeah. It, was, it was the same thing. Any memories of Sandman? Me and Sandman used to get high. <laughs> How often? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Every goddamn weekend. Every goddamn yeah. weekend. We had we had Sandman here before. He was a good guy. I mm -hmm. liked him. It in a wrestling event, not just here in the studio. But um, what about Mikey Whipwreck, a guy that you'd look at him and you'd say that guy doesn't fit in with what they're trying to do Mike in was ECW. Cool. Yeah, he was cool. And he had a long run there mm -hmm. outside of his. I think he left for a while to go to WCW. But yeah, he came back. 
eventually because he was doing that tag team with Tajiri and Jim Mitchell. But mm -hmm. Good guy? Yeah. Yeah. One I failed to mention that worked a few shots. I, I don't remember. I, it, it escaped me, but in my research for it, I came across it. Our Thursday night pot, partner in crime here on this talk show series, Party with Marty, Marty Gennetti. He did four or five shots with ECW. Did Do you he? remember that? Yeah. I don't remember that. No, no, I don't even think he does. Uh, <laughs> Do you think he would have been a good asset to ECW? Maybe not as a brawler, but just as kind of a, a ring general? I mean, one of the great tag team wrestlers of all time, I think. I mean, if he works him out like Van Dam, then yeah, he would have did all right. But if he tried to work with us, we would have killed him. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't have been the style for him. Mm. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But I just thought it was hysterical that Marty was an ECW guy, at least for a few shots. Mm -hmm. it, was, I, it was like a Florida tour. Jim Neidhart even worked it. Right. And, you know, no recollection of any of that, though. No. And it was so short. What did you think about the debut of Steve Austin coming kind of out of the blue after WCW canned him with a broken neck, and he decided to go extreme and pretend he was Hulk Hogan? I never paid him any attention. Why is that? I just didn't. I, I, I didn't like him. Why? I just didn't. It was just, I mean, some people I like, some people I just, I take to, and then there's just some people I can just look at and be like, I don't like that motherfucker. You just get a vibe right off yeah. the bat? Yeah. Well, he wasn't stone cold then, but the fans certainly had a lot of fun with him doing the Hulk Hogan imitations yeah. and so on and so forth. I think I saw a promo where he did about that. Yeah, they, they were kind of funny, mm -hmm. I have to say. It certainly wasn't what he would go on to be a year or two later in WWF. Oh, that's for yeah. sure. All right, fans, we're getting the cue from the back. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with Wrestling Insider Extreme wrap up the show. Stand by. Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. On October 28, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible now. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders Extreme. Dan Marotti here with New Jack. We're having a blast with these episodes. We finally got into the ECW days. The gangsters and public enemy are at war headlining main events with some top tier talent in the company, which I think shows just the belief that Paul Heyman and or Todd Gordon had and what you guys were doing. You were over as fuck, so to speak. Yep. A great feeling to go to the arena knowing that you had that kind of support, whether they loved you, they hated you, they wanted to see you get in there yeah. and kick ass or get your ass kicked. Yep. What did you think about the debut of some of the luchadors that would come to ECW to try and spice things up? I never watched it. Never watched <laughs> it. 
<laughs> Did you ever interact with uh, Rey Mysterio when he came in? I mean, we will speak, but to watch their matches, I'd rather eat bugs. I didn't watch their matches. I would go up at the top and sit down and get dressed and just sit there. That luchador shit, I never got into it. I didn't like it. It's almost like, what do they call those shows out in Vegas? Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of, it, it, it's certainly a different style than what you saw in ECW, but to their credit, the fans kind of ate it up for a while. They didn't have a... a they, the fans liked it, but I yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think it added variety to the show mm -hmm. instead of... Because you know what? I think if he had a show with seven, eight, nine matches where everybody brawled like you guys, by the time you guys went out for the main event, they'd seen a lot of brawling right. like that. You know what I mean? When you had guys flying, flipping, flopping, spinning, and doing all that shit, you know, for 20 minutes, it was a distraction from all the violence that was a big part of the rest of the show, you know what I mean? Right. One man's opinion, one man's opinion. You worked with many, many, many varieties of Dudleys. What did you think of that, especially early on when they were just kind of comedic goofs when you first debuted, before they really stuck with the core of Bubba Ray and Devon with the Big Dick as the bodyguard? I know there was Dudley Dudley, there was Dances with Dudley, there was Dudleys galore. <laughs> what did you think of the more comedic Dudleys? that were meant for fun. I wasn't a fan of that, but you worked there. I personally don't like Bubba and Devon. Okay. When they went to WWE, they went, they was wearing tie-dye. Where'd they get that? Okay, yeah. that's what they was wearing when they was in ECW. No, no, I, that's what I mean. Where did they get that idea? Okay, but then they started wearing camouflage, which is what I wore. They changed their ring intro music at the beginning. How mine just come out with the missile drop? They changed that to theirs. That's right. You know what I mean? So I have no respect for neither one of them motherfuckers, and it's not a secret. I don't like them. What about when you were in ECW? We taught him a lot. Me and Mustafa, me and Kondo, we taught him a lot. But that's when they were still Bubba and Devon. But then all of a sudden they go to Vince and they then became the gangsters. A lot of similarities. Yeah. Yeah. I got no respect for well, them. Other than the shopping cart, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I got no respect I for them. Well, you know what? We had Devon and... It wasn't a great experience, I guess you could say. Uh, I really don't know Bubba Ray all that well, but we'll get more into the Dudleys as time goes on. But I'm, right now I'm talking more along the lines of the, the, the goofy ones. The, the, you know, there was an Indian Dudley and Dances with Dudley and Dudley Dudley. And Did you think that fit what was going on in ECW? Did you think maybe it needed a little comedic break during the show for you guys to go kick their ass? Dude, I never... It's hard for me to comment about people I don't like. You didn't like those Dudleys either? No. The one <laughs> If they were Dudley, you hated the whole fucking family. Bubba was the biggest ass kisser in the locker room. He had his mouth around Paulie's dick like it was like it was a Georgia sport. You know what I mean? And I just I I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. You ever come across them at fan fests and whatnot nowadays? Huh? Did you ever come across them at like a fan fest nowadays? Yeah. Do they speak? Or yeah, no? I don't speak. Oh. You stick to your guns. That's one thing we can say yeah. about you. Uh, one triple threat match that was set up to headline a, a show at the arena. It wasn't just you and Public Enemy. They added Raven and Stevie Richards to the mix to put the tag team titles onto them. Your memories of Raven and Stevie Richards. Well, it was supposed to be Raven and Stevie Richards in the Blue Meanie. Okay. And something happened with Stevie Richards, and they replaced him with Chad Austin. Okay. And I beat the shit out of Chad. Because Chad had came to me in Smoky Mountains, and he was like, I'm an agent for ECW. And he was like, 
can we do this, 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 and this in the ring? And I was like, I thought you was the agent. Shouldn't you be calling the goddamn match? <laughs> and when he got in the ring, I beat that boy. Dude. I beat the shit out of him. Look it up. New Jack versus Chad Austin. That, that, that's what it's going to say. In Smoky Mountain or ECW? ECW. ECW? Yeah. I tried to kill him. You disliked him that much? Yeah. Yeah. And how do you feel you did as far as what your mission was? Oh, I got him. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> I was close to it. And it was a singles match, not a tag? No, it was a tag. But on the internet, it says New Jack versus Chad Austin. I got you. That's how you can find it on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, I got you. What did you, any memories, thoughts on working with Raven and Richards? I never worked Raven. You did in that, that uh, triple threat. I don't remember. You don't remember it? No. What did you think of Raven the guy? A lot of people say he's a very uh, super intelligent I mean, individual. He's, 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 he's in character. He stays in character. He might be intelligent, but I've never seen that part. He just stays in character. What about Stevie Richards? He's he had, cool. He's a good guy? Yeah. He had a couple of stints in ECW, even after he broke his neck. At one point, people thought he was done after he broke his neck, so it was good that he was even able to, to come back to work in mm -hmm. ECW at that point. Um, but Did you like the triple threat matches, four-way matches, or did you prefer two-on-two tag matches? It didn't matter. Long didn't I matter? <laughs> long as I got paid, I didn't give a fuck. And you know, I think I know the answer to this, but a lot of people have asked the question, why is it that your music would just play continuously through your match, which I, I thought was ingenious. I told Paulie to let my music play through the whole match. He said, why? I said, it'll seem like a fight scene in the movie. I never knew that was the reason why. You know, and he said, it's not going to work. I said, try it. I said, if it don't work, scratch it. I said, but I just got this idea that it'll work. I said, try it. And the night that we did it, he came back and he apologized. He said, can you do that every night? I said, yeah. And we did. Worked great. Right? Yeah. And it just, one night you were just laying in bed and it kind of came to you? Yeah. Or, yeah? I, I, I was actually watching the movie. Oh, <laughs> during I, was, that, during I, was, I was at home watching the movie and it was fighting. And, and I was listening to the music more than I was watching the fight. And that's where I got it from. And you know what? For better or worse, I can't think of anyone else they've ever done that with. Mm -mm. Nobody. An original. Mm -hmm. Again. Yeah. Would you remember the movie? No. No. <laughs> it was that long ago. My God, yeah. But no, I think that's one thing that really made the gangsters stand out, was that during this wild melee, this wild brawl, whether it be uh, fighting in the ring, you know, jumping out of stands, jumping off of balconies, that cool fight music was playing through mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. That was ingenious of you. Mustafa made out well because of some of your ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, I know you weren't a fan of the Luchadors, but uh, Conan, Psychosis came in as well. Any memories of those guys? Not really. No, you didn't interact much with them? No. Uh, and what I thought was kind of a uh, moment, you had Mikey Whipwreck become the ECW world champion. I know you were a tag team guy, but did you think it fit having him as the ECW world champion, the guy in the company? I don't know because I never paid belts any attention. You weren't a belt guy. I never won the belt. And I would tell Paulie, don't put the belts on us. I said, because I don't need it. You didn't want them. I said, Taz needs a belt. Sabu needs a belt. I said, I don't need a belt. So just out of spite, I would take my belt and put it in the garbage can. Jesus. And run to the ring and throw it in the ring and all of a sudden the belt pop out. He was like, will you stop doing that? I'm like, no, because I don't need a fucking belt. And we got to understand that I didn't need a belt, so he stopped putting them on us. Hmm. Uh, as 95 started to wind down, Two Cold Scorpio became the ECW TV champion. Mm -hmm. I know Belts aren't your thing, but any memories of Too Cold? I like school. Yeah? Yeah. What was good about Too Cold? Anything that stands out? Or? Funny story. 
I was suspended one of many times from ECW. Scorp got like five kids. They're probably grown now. He called me one day. He said, Jack, where you at? I said, I'm at home. He said, I want to stop by and talk to you. I said, talk to Dan, you're on the phone. He said, no, I need to see you in person. I said, all right, I'll meet you downstairs. I stayed in a high rise in Atlanta. Scorp comes by in a van. And it's got like five kids in it. So I come out to the curb. I'm like, what's up? He said, you still suspended, right? I said, yeah. He said, well, I need a favor. He said, can you babysit for me this weekend? I said, baby, said who? He said, it's my weekend to have the kids. But I'm booked in Philly. So now I'm looking at all five of these kids <laughs> sitting there staring at me. I'm like, Scope, I ain't about to keep all them goddamn kids. He was like, Jack, I'm going to take the first flight out Sunday morning to come home. I said, I'm not keeping them fucking kids. And he was like, just this weekend. I said, no. I said, you take them little motherfuckers with you. I said, I'm not about to keep them goddamn kids. Take the minivan up to Philly. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, all right, I understand. I said, you're going to have to understand. I said, because I'm not babysitting no five fucking kids. If it was just one or two, would you have taken it? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Boy, do you know what he wound up doing with them in the end? I have no idea. No idea? No, no idea. All right, wrestling fans, again, we're winding down. Another great episode. Had a lot of fun here with New Jack as we continue his early months in extreme championship wrestling. What a time it was in the world of wrestling. Uh, we're going to be hitting the point now where not only was ECW starting to get more popular and more popular and more popular by the month, but WCW and WWF were starting to show a little bit of life with their own Monday Night Wars going on between Raw and Nitro. We're going to continue the series, folks. If you're loving it, give us your thoughts in the premiere chat during the episode debut. Uh, if you don't watch us live, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. The Super Chat button is on. Don't forget to tip the bartender, as we say. Not that we'd ever have an adult beverage or anything like that going Never. on. Never. Ever. Ever. Ever would we do anything like that. Don't forget about the Patreon fans. Patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. A little OJ for your breakfast. Yeah. Uh, where you can help keep wrestling legends working and stream hundreds of studio shoot interview videos like this over at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. The nightlife may be dead due to coronavirus, but our eBay store is open 24-7. Tons of great merchandise like you see on this set. Uh, you can find the link in the description box below. And if you're looking for a great read, especially now that the summer is coming up, people like to go on vacation, they like to travel, they like to go to the beach. I'm telling you, if you're looking for a great read, right here, baby. And the place to get it, the only newjack.com. And it'll be mailed direct from the Carolinas with love. You can get it uh, as is. I believe there are even autographed copies available. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Place to be, only new, the only newjack.com. For our friend New Jack, I'm Dan Marotti. We will see you next time on Wrestling Inside is Extreme. Good night. Peace. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.